Okay, in this demo we're going to be going through the Linux distribution Mepis and specifically the full-blown version known as simply Mepis. The Mepis raison d'etre is very similar to Linux Mint in that it comes fully configured with a whole host of applications straight off the install disk. It also has full flash support and full audio visual facilities. So basically it's usable straight out of the box and what we've got on the video screen here is a version of Simply Mepis which is running directly from a USB live stick so it's like a live CD but I've actually just put it on a USB stick to make it run a little bit quicker and as you'll see in the demo the response is not bad at all um, for, especially for such a um, fairly upscale version of Linux so firstly let's take a look at the minimum requirements if I click down here on my Firefox window we're using the fully fledged Simply Mepis version here so the requirements are very similar to Linux Mint so you'll need about 4 gig of available hard disk space you'll need a reasonable processor I'm not quite sure what processor I'm running here but it's like a 5 year old laptop so I think your PC will probably be more than a match for what I've got here. Um, they recommend 512 meg RAM, but it'll run with less than that. Um, again, I'm not sure what this PC has, but 512 would be the max it has. Um, there's a different version of Mepis that we may look at later in the uh, year called Antix, which is a cut-down version, which is basically the same um, core behind the system but and a very basic desktop I mean, it does the job but um, if your PC can run the simply Mepis full version then I would certainly recommend using that now the desktop as we can see here is based on KDE which is uh, quite a powerful desktop and I think first thing we'll do is we'll just take a tour around the screen here now up the left hand side here you can see all these different icons uh, most of them are shortcuts to documentation, so um, for instance, one thing you might want to take a look at is this Mepis Quick Start Guide. So again, this gives you a tour around the desktop, tells you what all the icons are, um, and is really useful as a reference tool. It doesn't really go into much detail, but if you've forgotten what a particular icon does, then it's uh, quite a nice facility to just go there and check. Um, the full Mepis manual is also available here, so if uh, the quick start guide doesn't give you enough information, you can click down into this, or you can go ahead and look at the Mepis website to uh, look up what other documentation information they have there. A shortcut also to the trash can. Okay, so if we open that up, we can see several files that I've deleted. Um, we then have a shortcut to the file manager which uh, in simply Mepis case is called Dolphin so you can go down to your um, desktop here take a look at a particular file you can right click it to uh, do things like uh, delete it um, rename it etc or you can take a look at the properties permissions etc so all the sort of things that you'd expect of a fully um, functioning file manager. At the bottom here we have the icon to actually install Mepis. Now as I say at the moment I'm running in live CD mode um, from a USB drive so uh, you have the facility to go ahead and install it directly to your hard drive so that it's there all the time. Dropping down to the bottom of the screen here this is what's known as the KDE panel and it's basically divided into three parts. There's the user tray here with your icon shortcuts. There's the um, section in the middle where you have all your minimized applications. In this case I've got three applications running Dolphin, Firefox and my uh, console window. And then over here on the right hand side we've got the system tray with various functions. So if we go left to right down in the bottom left hand corner if you click on it this is the main menu and as we said earlier on, Mepis comes complete with a whole host of applications. So if we just flick down through here quickly, um, you get a few uh, basic games. Graphics wise, you get things like um, GIMP already installed in Inkscape, which is excellent. 
Uh, on the internet side, we've got Firefox, we've got Kmail, which is the email cli client, and you've got Conqueror. Um, multimedia, you've got the Amarok audio player, you've got um, K3B, which is a like Bracero for disc burning, and you've got Caden Live already there, and the VLC media player for playing um, MP4 files, which is excellent. On the Office side, you've got the complete Libra Office suite, uh, and then you've got all this kind of system functionality that you'd expect in a fully uh, functioning operating system, so all the utilities and things down here. And uh, at the top here we've got a uh, lot shortcuts to our favourites, so Synaptic Package Manager, so obviously uh, Mepis is based on Debian and uh, Ubuntu sources as well, so you should find that any KDE based application out there for Debian should run OK on Mepis. Uh, and then we've got uh, our shortcuts to things like our browser, our terminal and our video editor. OK, this next icon to the right hand side is your virtual desktop switcher. So there are four virtual desktops by default. So at the moment we're on desktop one. And we've got our single application, which is Dolphin, here. Um, if we try desktop two, I've got my um, terminal window. Desktop three, I've got my browser. And desktop four, I don't have anything. So it's just a simple way of partitioning your applications instead of having all your windows open all over the screen you can put different parts of your work in different areas and uh, keep them separate this icon here is a shortcut to the system settings so this is where you can uh, change the way uh, the system is configured play around so you can um, create new accounts change account details change the way the Windows look. You, we can add effects, we can change the backdrop, etc. etc. And we can also do things like configure our network, set up printers, devices, etc. etc. All the normal things you'd expect. Um, down here, then we have a series of shortcut icons. So we have our shortcut to our file manager here, our browser, and our email client. Then this middle area, this contains our minimized applications. So as you can see, they're all in three different workspaces. So if I click on them, it brings that window up and takes me directly to the workspace that they reside in. OK, so let's just make that one smaller. Move it around just so you can see. So that's nice. That's similar to every, every other operating system you've ever used, I'm sure. Now this icon over here is the notifications or jobs so if you've got any um, system warnings or errors or anything like that or jobs that complete they'll pop up in that window there and give you full details access to the package manager so that's um, synaptic so if you click on there you can install um, remove and um, check when you uh, when you made any changes to your packages and download new applications as you need them. This window here gives you uh, access to the clipboard so you can copy, paste and um, play around with the contents of the clipboard. Uh, this next one is your volume settings so you can obviously change your volume here to be uh, quieter or louder and mute it. I'm going to leave it as it is there. This next one is because we're running on a laptop. We've got our battery indicator. So you can see it's 98% charged here. It's always good to know. Our USB drives. Of course, this is where our operating system is sitting. Okay, It's an 8 gig USB drive. But we've got plenty of space here. See, So we could easily fit this on a 4 gig drive by the looks of it. Uh, this next one is our network setting. So you can see we're attached to uh, Ethernet here on our uh, wide area connection then this little um, carrot here if you click here if you've got any more icons that can't fit on the screen here then you access it via this little carrot here so we click it up you can see there are a couple of um, extra things down here our printer applet here to access what's being printed and this looks like Bluetooth Finally, we have our time, and if we click on the time here, we get access to the calendar here. 
so we can add our events and things around here and we can change to check our months and we can put in extra appointments and things here click back on the time uh, and then at this extreme right hand side we have what's known as these uh, cashew icon so if I click on the cashew icon what this allows me to do is to basically configure the KDE panel all the way along here so instead of having all these icons in this predefined or order I can move them around add different icons and remove them so as you can see here as I slide my mouse around here it tells you which part of the panel you're on so you can see here I'm in the system tray and then I go down to the task manager tray if I go down here you can see these are just shortcut icons and things so you can change this chop and change this around however you like it you can add extra widgets as it's called and ex extra things down in here like uh, icons and quick launchers and um, uh, or you can put in some blank space using this spacer okay I'm not going to change that now so I'm just going to click uh, that down. The only other thing on the desktop to note is this second cashew up in the top right hand cor corner to access the toolbox. Okay, again, similar to the cashew at the bottom, but this allows you to configure the way the actual rest of the desktop works. So, again, you can add widgets, like you can add different icons around here, you can change the order. Uh, and the way we do this is that uh, we unlock the uh, desktop we do our activity and then we lock it again and then that um, makes sure we don't do any accidental changes that we don't want so I just click away from it to actually just click back on the icon to get rid of it and that is the desktop so um, one other great thing that we didn't mention actually if I go back to my browser here is that straight out of the box I'm sorry for advertising Amazon here but if I click on here you can see that flash plays straight out the box which is really cool because um, even distributions like Ubuntu and um, Fedora don't come with flash support already configured so you actually end up having to get out on the web and go find the uh, the drivers for flash okay so um, if you go to our website um, if you forget any of this uh, video you can come back here and look at the link here under uh, the Simply Mepix KDE desktop. So that is Simply Mepix. And um, certainly my impression of using it over the short period of time that I have been evaluating it is that it's really slick actually. It's, uh, it's got a nice feel to it. It seems pretty stable. It runs pretty quick as you can see just in live CD mode off a USB stick it's got all the facilities there you want it's got um, customizability built in um, it's got everything you need out of the box so really if you're a, if you're a new user to Linux um, you really don't have to install anything else really in order to get going so I'd recommend you get out there and um, have a go with it and um, if you need to know how to install the system we've also got details you can see there they're the full instructions on how to install it and um, and download it so good luck with that and um, thanks for watching